Imagine standing in the heart of Italy, the air thick with tension, and a young general staring into the eyes of adversity. A battle looms that could spell doom or glory for Napoleon Bonaparte, a name soon to be etched into the annals of history with iron and fire. This is no ordinary tale. This is the story of how a day teetering on the edge of disaster was grasped by the hands of fate and turned into a victory that shaped a continent. Stay with us as we unravel the extraordinary saga of Napoleon and the Battle of Marengo, where defeat danced with victory. In the charged atmosphere following the French Revolution, Europe's monarchies watched with unease as France's revolutionary fervor threatened to spill beyond its borders. The War of the Second Coalition, a formidable alliance of European powers including Austria, Russia, and Britain, was the collective response aimed at curtailing the spread of French influence and toppling the new regime. Italy became a crucial battleground as Austria sought to regain its lost territories and influence in the region. As the year 1800 dawned, the young general Napoleon Bonaparte, freshly installed as the first consul of France, was presented with a fractured and precarious strategic situation. His armies in Italy, once victorious, were now on the back foot after a series of setbacks. The Austrians, under General Michael von Mellis, held the upper hand and were poised to strike a final blow to reassert their dominance in Italy. It was against this backdrop that the Battle of Marengo unfolded. Its importance cannot be overstated. It was a chance for Napoleon to revitalize French fortunes in the war, secure his own political position back home, and send a resounding message to the hostile coalition that France, under his leadership, would not be subdued. The battle would serve as a definitive test. Could Napoleon outmaneuver the experienced Austrian forces and pull France back from the brink of disaster? As we venture into the heart of the Battle of Marengo, remember that this is not merely a tale of military strategy, but a pivotal chapter in the story of Napoleon's rise and the shaping of modern Europe. As the specter of the War of the Second Coalition loomed over Europe, the Italian peninsula once again became the stage for a grand display of military might and tactical wit. Napoleon, cognizant of the historical and strategic significance of Italy, a land that had witnessed the marches of legionaries and the charge of knights, was now facing a formidable Austrian force intent on reclaiming their influence and territory. In this tense prelude to Marengo, echoes of the past resonated with the present. Napoleon, much like the Carthaginian general Hannibal centuries before, eyed the formidable barrier of the Alps. Where his foes saw nature's insurmountable wall, Napoleon envisioned a path to destiny. With a daring reminiscent of Hannibal's legendary crossing, Napoleon maneuvered his army through the treacherous mountain passes, traversing routes that were deemed impossible for an organized force. This audacious approach was not just a physical undertaking. It was a gambit that played on the psychological front. Napoleon's surprise emergence from the Alpine mists into the plains of northern Italy mirrored the shock that Rome felt when Hannibal appeared at its doorstep. General Michael von Melas, much like the Romans of old, found himself outmaneuvered by a commander who wielded surprise as deftly as a swordsman wields his rapier. The maneuver did more than just catch Melas off guard. It shifted the strategic initiative into French hands and allowed Napoleon to dictate the terms of the engagements to come. The approach to the Battle of Marengo was set, not with the cautious probing of an inexperienced commander, but with the confident strides of a leader whose very moves challenged the traditional tenets of warfare. Napoleon's crossing was not only a stroke of strategic ingenuity, it was a bold statement that he was a force to be reckoned with a leader whose vision and audacity were reminiscent of the great commanders of antiquity. As the French forces descended from the Alps, the stage was set for a confrontation that would not just determine the fate of Italy, but also affirm Napoleon's place as one of history's most formidable military minds. The Battle of Marengo loomed on the horizon, and with it, the opportunity for Napoleon to weave his name alongside Hannibal's in the tapestry of military legends. The Battle of Marengo initiated on the morning of June 14, 1800, quickly unfurled into a tapestry of violence and strategy. Napoleon's forces, having descended from the Alps, were deployed across the Italian plains in a manner that was audacious yet perilously thin. This dispersion meant to cover a wide area to prevent the escape of Austrian forces had left the French ranks stretched and vulnerable, a gamble that teetered on the edge of calamity. 
As the Austrian artillery thundered and their infantry advanced in relentless waves, the French army began to buckle. It appeared that Napoleon's strategy had miscalculated the Austrians' resilience and their ability to launch a vigorous assault. Melas, sensing victory, pressed his advantage, his seasoned forces cutting through the French with the precision of a surgeon's scalpel. The French, for all their valor, seemed destined to be penned in a history of tragic valor, their lines wavering under the Austrian onslaught. But within this dire strait, the genius of Napoleon's tactics simmered. His reserve, a force of fresh and unyielded soldiers led by the indomitable General Louis Desay, was a hidden blade waiting to be unsheathed. Desailly, a commander of remarkable foresight and fearlessness, was poised to tip the scales. As the French lines began to fracture and defeat loomed like a specter over Napoleon's ambitions, Desailly's corps arrived with the thunderous cadence of destiny marching to the beat of drums. This critical maneuver was Napoleon's calculated risk, his strategic depth laid bare. It was a test of nerve, a demonstration of the art of timing in war. Desailly's arrival was not just timely, it was almost prophetic. The counterattack that Desailly launched was more than a military action. It was the rekindling of French hope, the embodiment of tenacity, and the hallmark of a commander who understood that the art of war is often found in the mastery of moments. Desailly's fresh troops crashed into the Austrians like a wave, a powerful surge that reversed the flow of battle. It was a pivotal strike, one that not only salvaged the French from defeat, but also turned their near route into a rout of the enemy. The impact of this counter-assault was immediate and devastating. It resonated with the power of history's great reversals and marked the Battle of Marengo as a testament to the notion that a battle is not over until the final charge is sounded. Yet as the counter-attack unfolded, the realities of war's grim nature became all too clear. In the thick of battle, leading his men with the courage that had become his hallmark, General Desay was struck down and felled by a fatal bullet. His fall was a stark moment amidst the tumult, a profound sacrifice that lent an even more epic scale to the unfolding drama of the battle. Desay's demise did not quell the French onslaught he had inspired. Rather, it became the rallying cry for his soldiers. The counterattack he led did not simply push the Austrians back, it utterly reversed the tide of battle. Desailles' troops, inflamed by the loss of their beloved commander, fought with a redoubled fervor that seemed to embody their leader's indomitable will. As the sun began to dip toward the horizon on that fateful day, the Battle of Marengo reached its crescendo. The French army, reinvigorated by Desailles' valiant last stand, prepared to deliver the final act in this epic of blood and valor. At the heart of this was General Francois Kellerman, whose name would soon be etched in the annals of military glory. Kellerman grasped the reins of opportunity and, with the steely focus of a veteran warrior, orchestrated a cavalry charge that would become the stuff of legend. His dragoons, cuirassiers, and hussars assembled with an air of lethal intent, their flanks glinting in the waning light, their horses stamping the earth in eager anticipation. With a commander's keen eye, Kellerman waited for the precise moment when the Austrian formation showed its vulnerability, a seam in the fabric of their defense. And then, with a thunderous roar that shook the field, Kellerman unleashed his cavalry. Like a silver blade through silk, they cleaved into the Austrian ranks with a precision and ferocity that seemed otherworldly. The charge was not merely a movement of men and horses, it was the embodiment of Napoleonic warfare where the coordination of different arms of the military was orchestrated with the precision of a maestro. The cavalry's lances and sabers brought not only physical, but also psychological shattering, the hooves of their mounts drumming the requiem of Austrian ambitions. This charge was the final gambit, the decisive stroke that broke the will of the Austrian army. As Kellerman's horsemen penetrated the enemy lines, the French infantry followed, their bayonets gleaming like avenging angels in the fray. The artillery, never silent, continued to hammer away at the Austrian positions, their cannonballs carving arcs of destruction through the air. On this battlefield, where the smoke of gunpowder mingled with the cries of the fallen, a deadly ballet unfolded. Each element of Napoleon's army played its part with lethal grace, a combined arms operation that was as much an art form as it was a display of military prowess. The French forces moved in a macabre dance of death, each step choreographed by necessity and opportunity, 
each movement leading to the inexorable conclusion of Austrian defeat. Kellerman's charge did more than pierce a formation. It pierced the very heart of the enemy's resolve. It was an exclamation point to a battle that had seen the pendulum swing wildly between hope and despair. The Austrians, so confident in the morning, now found their lines in tatters, their strategy undone by the bold strokes of French audacity. As the Austrians retreated, the day's tale came to a close, a tale of a battle won not just through the might of arms, but through the unparalleled coordination of all the facets of war. The Battle of Marengo would be remembered as a masterclass in the application of combined arms, where the synchronization of infantry, cavalry, and artillery under the aegis of a singular strategic vision led to a victory that resounded across Europe. As the dust settled over the fields of Marengo, a profound silence descended. It was the quiet of a monumental victory, one that had been snatched from the clutches of defeat through strategic brilliance, the valor of soldiers and the sheer force of will. The aftermath of the battle revealed a landscape transformed by the fury of the engagement, a tableau of triumph and tragedy. In the wake of the battle, Napoleon's reputation as a military commander was not just enhanced, it was enshrined. The victory at Marengo did not merely disrupt Austrian plans, it forced a dramatic shift in the power dynamics of Europe. The Austrians were compelled to evacuate northern Italy, signing the Convention of Alessandria, which effectively left the rich plains of the Piedmont to French control. The ripple effect of this victory was immediate and far-reaching, reasserting French dominance in the region and bolstering Napoleon's political position back home. The War of the Second Coalition, however, was far from over. Despite the setback at Marengo, the coalition forces, made up of a diverse alliance led by Britain, continued to resist French expansion. The conflict would see several more engagements, with battles raging from the shores of the Mediterranean to the depths of the Iberian Peninsula. It would be another year of grueling warfare before the war drew to a close with the Peace of Luneville in 1801, which reaffirmed French dominance in Central Europe and effectively dissolved the Second Coalition. The story of Marengo and its aftermath echoes through the corridors of history, a tale of ambition, ingenuity, and the unquenchable thirst for supremacy. It stands as a testament to the notion that a single day of battle can alter the fate of nations and the course of history. If you've been captivated by this story of determination and daring, then dive into the past with us and uncover the legends, the truths, and the lessons that history has to offer. Take a moment to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to stay notified of our latest content. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Remember, history is not just a chronicle of past events. It is the compass that can guide our future. Until next time, keep the wheels of time turning.